guys here having fun, I can tell. Isn't it great to have fun as a believer? Yeah. Find out that uh, God can put that deep down joy and happiness inside of you and it just bubbles out and splashes on you and others that are around you. You know, being a Christian ought to be contagious. We ought to, we ought to be around folks and, uh, and just influence and maybe even infect them with the glorious gospel of Christ. I'm so glad that God loves us and God is our friend. I'm so glad God smiles upon us. I'm so glad God said laughter is good medicine and He says the joy of the Lord is our strength. Always like to read something kind of funny. And uh, I thought this was kind of, this was very short, but, uh, and to the point, but I thought it was pretty. There was a baker that was asked to print 1 John 4, 18 on a wedding cake. Well, he forgot as he was looking through his notes to notice the one in front of John 4.18. And so instead he just simply printed John 4.18. First John 4.18 in the English Standard Version reads this way. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. However, John 4.18 in the English Standard Version reads, For you have had five husbands, and the one, and the one you have now is not yours. <laughs> that would be a terrible Five years. I'm, I, I, it seems like... I can't believe it's been that long, and then on the other hand, I can't believe it's that short, because it just seems like Francis and Rosemary have been part of our worship team for forever. It's such a good fit and a blessing to this ministry. We will miss them greatly, and we uh, yeah. appreciate them so much. I know they want to share a little music with us, and we'll get to the setup, but please welcome them again, Francis and Rosemary. Yeah.
electrician on the locomotives, and he was there, and they got established in a church. That's why you haven't seen them here in church with us every Sunday. But anyway, he was transferred then to Texas as an electrician because they needed somebody like him over there with the railroad. And there wasn't a lot of choice, but if we were living with him, but I think they relocated their house up here partly because they wanted to have a house that was acceptable to an old couple like us as well, and we could stay with them. So they've been great hosts for us, and we've really appreciated having them to take care of us. So we've had that five-year time with them. And then, since he's been transferred, in fact, he's already over there, um, some of the family, we have a great family. You haven't met many of them, but we have a fantastic family. Four kids, three boys and a girl, and they've been so helpful in many ways in the ministry and, and different things that they've done, whether it was our oldest son who was a missionary, who was a missionary in South America for 15 years, I think, and became the Northwest Director in Spokane for Village Mission, no, for New Tribes Mission, which now has a new name for it. But anyway, to shorten it down, we were concerned about, well, for some time, Rosemary and I both wanted to get up to Washington State. We were originally from the Northwest, near Seattle, and we wanted to see family before before the Lord took us home. But instead of him taking us home, he's moving us to Texas, at least temporarily. Anyway, what happened was we didn't have money to make a trip to Seattle and Spokane, where he's living, and uh, we didn't have an opportunity. We kept thinking, how could we get up there to see them one more time? So what happened was our son that's here now said, Dad, Mom, I'm going to take you. So he then took us to Seattle to see family. We got to see her brothers and sister. My family's almost all gone in that area. And so then he took us to Spokane to see our oldest brother and oldest son, oldest son with all of his kids and our grandkids that are there. We got to see them. Then he took us down to Oregon where his family is, a lot of them. And so we've been traveling around, and that's why we haven't been here the last uh, whatever it is. And three you or four know Sundays. we love parties, and we had a party wherever we went. <laughs> so, in any case, Francis turned ninety on February 29th, which whether well, wasn't a, you know the birthday got lost, and Nick he won't have one. He's twenty two and a half now. <laughs> but anyway, we enjoyed all of the time with the family, and then he brought us home, and then he brought us here this morning and our family has been busy packing up you know it is to move many of you had to do that and we've got a big house and a, we don't have it but our kids did but larry our son-in-law is already over there in in, in um, fort where fort uh, texas yeah or in texas anyway. <laughs> anyway, it's a big state it's a Lido. Okay. It's just a little place out of Fort Worth. Okay. Anyway, we're planning to be there because I think we need Tuesday morning to go first stop Las Vegas area, and then down to Chandler, Arizona, where another son is pastoring a church there. Then we're going to be heading out after a few days to Texas. He's going to drive us there. He's and they sold the our car, so we're putting yeah, some passes. Right, we're, we're just depending on the family now. So anyway, we just love being here together with you. And can't think of another church. And we would have a big prayer request that you'd help us to find the right church and the right group of doctors that we've been using. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they can't be duplicated, so we want to do that. And we're going to sing a song, and you may want to share some more stuff. Maybe you're through sharing some. Okay.
so well 
up who were here for the and they had called just around trying to find if there was a church anywhere that was having a service on that Saturday night, which was uh, uh, our, that we had our special service, and uh, they called us, and uh, and so they came. And then uh, we had a great time visiting afterwards, and sat in the gym and just talked and visited for a long time, and uh, just felt like we'd known each other forever. And then the next morning, I got my surprise. When I couldn't find my son shoot, they said they were going to come. And then the next thing I did is I looked up, and there they were next to Randy on the worship team, and I'm going, whoa, that's pretty neat. So uh, uh, they've been a blessing. They've been here ever since. And, uh, wow. How time flies. Five years. Well, would you get your Bibles and stand with me and uh, hold them up high? Hold up high and say it with all of your heart. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today I'll be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess. My mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, Ever living, seeing the word of God, I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Thank you. You may be seated. You sound really good today. All right. I'm going to read the scripture to you. It's almost self-explanatory. Uh, I knew today we would probably be just a little bit short on time uh, because we're going to quit just a little early to make sure that we can have our time of uh, fellowship and uh, we can visit and have our hugs and take our pictures and, and uh, just uh, be with each other for a few moments in the, in the gym area, Elliot Hall. And uh, so but the scripture I have to read to you today is just a, it's a great scripture. And uh, it's got so much in it, I couldn't cover it all today anyway, so, uh, but I am going to read it to you. And it's the fifth chapter of Ephesians, starting with verse number one. Ephesians chapter five, beginning with verse number one. I'll give you a chance to turn over there. Ephesians. Chapter 5, verse 1. The Apostle Paul writes, Be imitators of God, therefore as dearly loved children, and live a life of love, just as Christ loved us, and gave himself up for us a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be a hint of sexual immorality or any kind of impurity or any kind of greed because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenities or foolish talk or coarse joking which are out of place. But rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral or impure or greedy person, such a person like that is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them. For you were once in darkness, but now you are in the light in the Lord. Live as children of light, for the fruit of light consists in all goodness and righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do 
with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes everything visible. Shall we bow our heads? Lord, we thank you for this uh, great scripture that we read that uh, is both a challenge and it's also a blessing. It's also a warning. We pray, God, as we just briefly look at it, that you will call things to our attention and that you will teach us a great lesson. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Boy, well, starts off by saying that we ought to be an imitator of God. Like little children imitate their mom and daddy. You know, little kids don't have to have a, a class on learning English to speak fluent English if that's what's spoken in your house. They imitate you. They want to be like you. They want to copy you. The greatest form of uh, a person showing you that they love you or care about you is that they imitate what you do. And children imitate their mother and dad. They copy them. They copy the ones that they love. When my little girl was very little, Kristen, um, Lord may remember this. Uh, we had a little lady that we had a little preschool and we had a little lady that was in charge of the preschool and uh, everybody loved her and uh, she had kind of a little bit of a Boston accent and uh, one day I was noticing my daughter and, and back then I had a real southern draw I used y'all and everything else because I had just come from Texas the year before and uh, I, so I had a, I had a great uh, southern draw, but I noticed that my daughter had a slight Boston accent. And I'm going, wait a minute, my wife doesn't have a Boston accent. I don't have a Boston accent. What is this? But she loved her so much that she copied her. And so she picked up that little bit of a Boston uh, accent in her voice. And I always thought about that. You will copy and be like the one that you love. And that's what he's saying to us as believers. He said you need to be like a little child imitating. A little child imitates the one he loves. God is asking you to be like a little child in your faith and imitate and do what pleases him. God wants us to do a lot of things that please Him. How are you going to find out what those things are? Well, the only way you're going to find it out is to dive into His Word and begin to read it and begin to find those scriptures that tell you what pleases God. This scripture here tells some things that please God. And it also tells some things that uh, God hates. And uh, so, just like little children are imitators, so we need to be an imitator of Christ, an, Im an imitator of God, and uh, we need to be just like them. He says that, that uh, God detests and hates uh, for uh, there to be sexual immorality or impurity or greed. Uh, those kind of things are, are foreign and should not be connected to a believer. A believer instead ought to have the love of God just bubbling out of them. A believer should have a thankful heart. You know, I'm around people so much that take every ounce of energy they have to gripe and moan and complain about something. You know what? If you're breathing a breath of air, count your blessings. If the Lord is coming to your heart, count your blessings. Amen. Tell Him that you're blessed. Tell Him that you love Him. Tell Him that you are 
so thankful for what he has done in your life. Copy the Lord. Don't be a person that is doing things which are contrary to what God wants. Now he uses a kind of an analogy in this scripture between light and darkness. And he mentions it several times. And I want to just point out a few of them. He says, you once, if you're a believer, you used to be, once upon a time, you were in darkness. But now you are in the light of the Lord. There's a difference between light and darkness. Darkness is always described as the place that evil and wickedness live. Darkness is a place that you can do things which are uh, to be hidden because you're ashamed of them. Darkness is a place the bad stuff happens. On the flip side of the point is, light is, is, is just exactly the opposite. When you have the light of God, it exposes sin. When you have the light of God, it chases away those things which are evil. When you have the light of God in you, it gives a witness to the glory of God. So we're to live in the light and not in darkness. He gives some different uh, things here about darkness. And I'm only going to point out a few of them just quickly. He talks about in darkness, there is wickedness, there is sexual immorality, there are things which are, are happening that uh, uh, are impure, should not be in a believer's life. That's what you used to have in your life before you became a Christian. And he said, you want to make sure that these things are there. Do not let someone with their empty words convince you to be a part of these things. They are opposed to God. You are not to live in darkness, but rather live in the light, and the light of God chases away darkness. Early on when we got this building, I never saw a building in my life as dark as this building was. Uh, it didn't have a window in it. Uh, and at that time, we didn't even have doors on the outside. It was the darkest building when we came inside. Uh, you, if you didn't bring your flashlight, just, you'd fall over something and break the break leg. It was dark in here. And I remember we were planning on having a uh, candlelight service. I think it was the first one we had in this building. And I was thinking all the time about how dark this building was and I didn't know if we were going to have enough light to light it up with the candles. And I mean, I was just thinking about that. But what I saw that night was so miraculous. I didn't need to have steam shovels and I didn't need to have people with, with buckets to carry out darkness out of here to make this place brighter. All we had to do was light a little light. It was amazing when we would lit one little candle and then two and then four and before long the whole building had a beautiful glow about it because the light chases away darkness. If we have evil and darkness in our country, the remedy to it is believers loving God loving each other, loving their neighbors, doing what's right, doing good, doing what pleases God. And when you have that light, it exposes sin, but it chases away darkness. And all of a sudden, there is a rich, warm glow because of your faith in Christ. That's what he's saying here. He's saying there's a difference between darkness and light. When you become a believer, you are a creature of light. The Bible says all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become brand new. 
When you become a believer, God makes you a new person. When you become a believer, God puts inside your heart joy and happiness, and He blesses you. You expose evil with the light. And with the light, good shines forth. I challenge you today. Let the light of God shine out of your life. Find out the things that please God and do those things. God loves you so much and He loves me so much and He cares about us that He wants the best for us. He wants the best. He has the best. And I want you to know that God wants to bring the best out of you. I believe that God is your biggest cheerleader. I believe that God cares about you. I believe that God put in you gifts and talents and abilities, and He has a plan and a purpose for your life, and He made each one of us very special and very different. Now I look at Francis and I look at Rosemary. Little did I know on that New Year's Eve night when they came here because we were the only place in town that had a church service, so to speak, on New Year's Eve. So they wanted to go, they wanted to, go to church. And so they came. And during that evening they mentioned to me that they wanted to go to church the next morning on New Year's. And I said, we've got a church service. And I invited them to come. That night I had no clue that they would come and become part of our church the way they have. The one thing you can say about Rosemary and Francis, Francis and Rosemary, is they give glory to the Lord. And you may not know it, but they have been chaplains here in our hospital. And they have been on every floor and in every room uh, until COVID kind of put a pinch on that. But they have were such a blessing. And I would often be in the hospital visiting and I would hear some music down the hall. And it'd be Rosemary and Francis singing in the room with the door open. What a blessing they were. And I thought to myself, now that's like your light shine. Going into a place where people are hurting, where people are sick, where people are discouraged and down, and singing songs that bless their heart. And nurses and everyone else would sneak around there to listen. <laughs> and then what you might not know is, they became television stars. They dressed wearing the same colors, today it's blue, uh, and uh, that kind of got uh, caught on one of the local TV shows. And then the next thing you know, it got picked up on national broadcast, and uh, their fact that they dressed and that they went in as the chaplains and sang and blessed people uh, was Put on the news nationwide. Some people probably don't even know that. But uh, uh, what I'm trying to say is that is letting your light shine when you bless other people. Now, folks, be honest. Be honest. How many folks, 90 years old, are out and about? singing and praising the Lord and sharing the love of Jesus. Uh, they have their issues physically. I know they do. They've had their problems. 
but they've used every bit of energy they have to share the gospel uh, with other folks. You get to sing in lots of doctor's offices. You do, I know you do. <laughs> I know you do. Well, the, the whole point of it is all of us are uniquely different and special. But there are things that we can do to expose God's love to others and to share God's love with our neighbor that only we can do. I can see a certain number of people in a week. My wife can see a certain number of people in a week. But the fact of the matter is you folks go out in places I will never get. And you have the opportunity to imitate God as his dear children and then spread the love of God to us. Most people would love to have a friend. Most people would love to have someone they could talk to. Most people would love to have someone that would listen to them. Most people would like to be loved on. And so, if you love on people, God will open doors of opportunity to share what God has done in your heart. Be imitators of God. Copy God. Be like God. As dearly loved children, just like kids do. And live a life of love as Christ loves you and gave himself up for you on the cross. Live that kind of a life that will be a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. 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 We're going to sing a song. And uh, if you have a need, this is our prayer time. If you'd like to come and be anointed with oil or you would like to uh, uh, come to an altar and pray about anything that's going on in your life, if you would like to pray with one of our prayer partners, we have a number of prayer partners, I hope they're here today, that can, uh, that can pray with you. Uh, if you would like to come and receive Christ, prayer partners can show you very simply how to receive the Lord. If you have a need of any kind, we invite you to come. I would remind you that we want to pray for those folks that are in the war over uh, across the sea. It's so important we pray for them. You know, many of those people that have been attacked are, are believers, are Christians. So we need to pray for them. Also, we just received word from Arlene Dobin. Uh, they've taken her to uh, the, the hospital. She's had heart pains. And so they sent word to us to especially pray for Arlene Dobin today. So let's all stand together. We're going to sing. If you'd like to come and pray, we invite you to come.
spirit is in the house. He's talking from his heart. It says, little tug you feel inside. It's because you're special to God and He loves you. He's talking to your heart. Listen to Him. If you don't know the Lord as your personal Savior, you need to find Him one this time. You need to come, let someone pray with you, and ask Jesus in your heart. If you're here today and you're a believer, you might want to come and just say, Lord, let the light of God shine through me and other people be touched by the life I live. If you're here today and you need to be prayed for and honored with oil, we will do that for you. But you can you come and ask us? Thank you. 